And so at this point, we're going to turn this over to Ruth Aussie. She's the community engagement liaison for the Rosemont area. Uh, buenas noches, yo soy Ruth, su enlace de integración comunitaria de la ciudad de Fort Worth. Y quiero dar las gracias por acompañarnos en este taller virtual como parte del cuarto proyecto de mejoramiento de vecindarios de la ciudad de Fort Worth. Este taller normalmente se llevaría a cabo en persona, pero en este momento estamos haciendo todos los talleres virtualmente a través de WebEx y Facebook Live uh, para ayudar a mantener el distanciamiento social. También quiero agradecerle a la Asociación de Vecinos, las familias de Rosma, por permitirnos poder usar su plataforma a través de Facebook Live para poder ayudar a llegar a tantos vecinos como podamos. Esta noche hablaremos rápidamente sobre el censo, miraremos recursos de la ciudad del Departamento de Servicios al Vecindario, escucharemos de Eric y Beatriz, a dos empleados del Departamento de la Ciudad. Ellos hablarán de programas de la ciudad gratis que pueden ayudar con reparaciones de hogar, preparación de declaración de impuestos, asistencia con pagos de servicios públicos, agua y más. Habrá un um, enlace para una encuesta en la sección de comentarios de Facebook Live y en el chat de WebEx. Uh, por favor, denos sus comentarios sobre los materiales y recursos que compartimos hoy. Si en algún momento tiene una pregunta, use la función de chat para enviar uh, una pregunta a nosotros. Si se une a nosotros en WebEx y si se une a nosotros por Facebook Live, uh, use la sección de comentarios. Este taller quedará grabado y estará disponible para compartir con vecinos a través de la aplicación and the next door. So council members, Aida, did you want to share a few words? Just a welcome to everyone. I'm glad we're going to be talking about the census this evening. I spent the morning at Rosemont Park Elementary passing out um, items to the school, the students to get ready for the school year and visited briefly with the census workers there who expressed concern that they were not reaching everyone in the Rosemont area. So this is a great opportunity to learn more about that. So I'm looking forward to this evening. Perfect. Ella es la concejal Anzira y nada más quiere um, decirles gracias por estar aquí. Y está feliz que vamos a compartir um, información del censo hoy. Estuvo en la escuela de Rosemont Elementary y habló con um, empleados del censo y compartieron que no están teniendo la respuesta que querían del área de Rosemont, so esperamos que después de esto vayan y llenen su censo. Uh, para empezar, vamos a compartir información del censo. So to start off, um, just to share a little bit of information uh, regarding the census, I'm going to share my screen here and just to give an overview of the census, we complete the census every year, uh, every 10 years, sorry, to make sure that everyone gets counted. And the reason why we want everybody to get counted is for fair representations. About every 10 years, the results of the census are used to reapportion the House of Representatives. Um, it's in our constitution, but it also helps realloc uh, allocate $675 billion um, throughout the whole country. It's important when we talk about redistricting and taking part is our civic duty. So, ¿por qué tomamos el censo? Lo tomamos el censo cada 10 años. Y se trata de una representación justa. Cada 10 años, los resultados del censo se usan para llevar a cabo la redistribución uh, proporcional de la Cámara de Representantes que nos representan a nosotros y está en la Constitución. Se trata de 675 mil millones de dólares que están distribuidos alrededor del, del país y se trata de redistribución legis, legislativa. Y es nuestro deber cívico. Uh, census data is being used all around us. Uh, it's used uh, different data whenever we, for the city, whenever we look to find out what, which neighborhood should be our next neighborhood improvement program. Um, estos datos del censo se usan en todas partes y se usan como datos para averiguar, uh, por ejemplo, en la ciudad, qué vecindario sería parte del mejor the program de mejoramiento. Uh, businesses use the census data to decide where to build factories, offices, stores, and where to create jobs. Hay empresas que usan estos datos del censo para decidir dónde construir fábricas, oficinas, tiendas, lo cual uh, crea em empleos. And um, the census is protected. 
It's against the law for the Census Bureau to publicly release your responses of in, in any way that could identify you or your household. Su privacidad está protegida. Es contra la ley que la oficina del censo uh, divulgue públicamente sus respuestas de cualquier manera que pudiera identificarlo a usted o a su hogar. Por la ley, sus respuestas no se pueden ser usadas en contra. Solo pueden ser usadas para producir estadísticas y datos. And we have until September 30th to complete the census. So you have a few more days to complete it. Uh, you'll see that now that if you have not completed the census, census takers are hitting the streets and they're visiting your homes. Um, they'll leave a notice letting you know how you can complete the census online. Um, so si se ha dado cuenta, si no ha completado el censo, ha tenido una visita de, de un empleado que trabaja para el censo y han dejado una nota si no lo ha encontrado en su casa y le dejan información de cómo puede llenar el censo en línea. Um, so how can you help? You're the experts and we want your ideas um, to make sure that everyone in the community gets counted. So if you have a neighbor that you know uh, hasn't opened the door when the census checker has come in, make sure that you're following up with them and making sure that they are also completing the census because this is something that's important, um, not just to the city, but to all of us because we want to make sure that we're all equally represented. So, ¿cómo puede ayudar usted? Uh, su opinión es muy importante y necesitamos sus ideas sobre la mejor forma de asegurarnos que todos se cuenten. Todas las personas en esta comunidad tienen hasta el 30 de septiembre para completar el censo. Y nos pueden ayudar con visitar con sus vecinos, sus familiares, uh, y decirles que llenen el censo si no lo han hecho todavía. Is there anything else I missed on the census, Catherine? Okay. Yeah, I just want to add one thing, probably the most important thing for a lot of our young families. We've heard concerns when maybe families are renting a home that maybe they have three or four children and that's the only amount of kids that are on their lease. And so whenever census taker comes around, um, maybe they've only said that they had one person on their lease. And so that's what they tell the census because they're afraid that their landlord might find out otherwise. Just want to reiterate that none of the information that is put on that's turned in for the census is shared with anyone, including their landlords. So, otra cosa importante que queríamos mencionar es que si usted renta su hogar, ninguna de la información que usted uh, comparta con el censo se va a dar al dueño del, o el propietario del hogar. Esa información es confidencial y solo se comparte con datos y estadísticas. No va a tener in, información personal sobre usted o información que le daremos a alguien más. And I think the only other big thing is with everything that we have um, been dealing with with COVID and a lot of the funds that have been sent to our local governments to be able to help people, the way that our government decides to give money to the cities is, is completely based on census data. So it's very important that people fill that out and share that information so that where their additional funds are needed in the future, we'll have access to that. Otra parte importante es saber que la mayoría de los fondos vienen uh, porque llenamos la información del censo. Toda la información que ha venido a nosotros de, uh, desde la pandemia de COVID-19 ha venido porque estamos representados por el censo y la gente sabe que tenemos tal, tantas personas porque estamos representadas y hemos sido contados por el censo. Perfect. So, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and we'll go ahead and get started with our neighborhood services presentation. And hopefully this time when I share it, it works the way that it's supposed to. Perfect. Um, the presentation that we're going to do today is help for you in your home. So it'll be everything that you would want to know to receive help yourself or for the home that you're currently living in. 
The City of Fort Worth offers many, many programs, some of which um, are not familiar to a lot of people who live and work in our city um, to help improve your home and the quality of life. Some of the programs help families have safer home and get help with bills or even buy a house. Um, la Ciudad de Fort Worth ofrece muchos, muchos programas uh, que la mayoría de la gente no conocen para ayudar a mejorar su hogar y su calidad de vida. Algunos de los programas ayudan a las familias a tener un hogar más seguro, obtener ayuda con las facturas o incluso comprar una casa. Otros uh, programas le ayudan a declarar sus impuestos, obtener entrenamiento de trabajo para que pueda ganar más dinero. Otros ayudan a mejorar a todo el vecindario. So some of the other programs that um, Neighborhood Services provides will be help filing your taxes, getting job training so you can make more money, and others help improve the whole neighborhood. Eligibility requirements are different for every program. Uh, most have income requirements and some are only for Fort Worth residents. Although there are some that are available to um, residents in Tarrant County and some are based on age of your home or whether your children live with you or not. Others are for veterans. Um, some programs are only offered at certain times of the year. Others are so popular that unfortunately they run out of funds but then get funded again the next year. And we want you to know more about the program so you and your neighbors and family members can take advantage of them. As we talk about each program, um, think about your home and your family. Uh, make note if you think this program might help you. Um, you don't have to worry about taking detailed notes or information um, as contacts for each program are going to be shared in a handout. We're, we'll make sure that we share this information um, with the Neighborhood Association so that they can post it afterwards. Uh, but there will also be a survey that you can complete and you can leave your email address and I'll make sure that I can get that information out to you. Los requisitos de elegibilidad son diferentes para cada programa. La mayoría tienen requisitos de ingresos. Algunos son, lo, son solo para residentes de Fort Worth. Otros también están abiertos a los residentes del condado de Tarrant. Algunos se basan en la edad de su hogar o si niños viven con usted. Otros solo so, son para veteranos. Algunos programas solo se ofrecen determinadas épocas del año. Um, otros son tan populares que se quedan sin fondos, pero luego se vuelven a financiar el próximo año. Queremos que sepa más sobre esos programas para que usted y sus vecinos y familiares uh, puedan aprovecharlos. Mientras hablamos de cada programa, piense en su hogar y su familia. Tome nota si cree que este programa podría ayudarle. No se tiene que preocupar por tomar notas detalladas. La información y los contactos de cada programa se encuentran en un folleto que vamos a compartir con ustedes um, al fin del taller por la página de Facebook. Pero si nos deja su correo electrónico, también se lo podemos enviar. Vamos a tener una encuesta donde también puede dejar ese correo de, electrónico. Uh, but before we start delving into all of the programs that Neighborhood Services has, um, I want everyone to know that the city of Fort Worth works hard to prevent discrimination of any kind. When it comes to housing, it's illegal to discriminate or intimidate someone because of the race, color, religion, nationality, uh, sex, disability, and more. The city's diversity and inclusion department has the authority to enforce city ordinances and federal laws that prohibit discrimination, including Fair Housing Act, that the diversity and inclusion staff can give you more information about anti-discrimination laws and investigate complaints. The next several programs are administered by the city's neighborhood services department. And we're gonna start with priority repair. Uh, primero que todo, quiero que sepan que la ciudad de Fort Worth trabaja arduamente para prevenir la discriminación de cualquier tipo. Cuando se trata de vivienda, es ilegal discriminar o intimidar a alguien por motivos de raza, color, religión, nacionalidad, sexo, discapacidad y más. El Departamento de Diversidad e Inclusión de la ciudad tiene la autoridad para hacer cumplir las ordenanzas de la ciudad y las leyes federales que prohíben la discriminación, incluida la ley de vivienda justa. El personal de la de diversidad e inclusión puede brindar la información sobre las leyes contra las uh, contra la discriminación y investigar quejas que usted hace. Los siguientes programas son administrados por el Departamento de Servicios al Vecindario de la Ciudad y empezaremos con la reparación de prioritaria. 
So Eric, I'll hand it over to you. So good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm excited to talk about a couple of programs that Neighborhood Services has to offer. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is priority repair, and it's broken down by a couple that I will go over. Uh, for each of these programs, I'll give you some basics uh, for understanding what the programs do, what their goals are, and then we'll also go over some of the eligibility requirements. But understand that uh, there's a lot more information to discuss, and so there's one of the handouts that is going to be sent out to you is going to have contact information for specific uh, numbers that you could call to get more information for each of these programs. So the first is priority repair, which is uh, the goal of emergency repairs. And this is capped at $5,000 per home. It has to be an owner occupied residence, meaning that you have to own and live in that residence as your primary uh, home. And uh, it has to be within the city of Fort Worth. Uh, it's emergency mechanical system, home repairs, health and safety repairs, and uh, it's limited to one repair per household uh, per year, so every 12 months. El primer programa que vamos a compartir es sobre prioridad uh, de reparamientos en el hogar. Y hay muchos programas de cuales vamos a hablar, pero es importante notar que la, toda la información de contacto para cada programa es diferente, pero la vamos a compartir al fin de la presentación. Um, el primer programa uh, puede de primera prioridad se abordan como primero son cosas como roturas de línea de agua el alcantarillado roturas de fugas de línea y son puede calificar por los primeros 12 meses entonces esas uh, son reparaciones de emergencia y no cosmética so some of those emergency repairs uh could be uh, that you think utilities and you think health and safety. So we think water and sewer lines. We can uh, also talk about um, our gas and uh, other things, water heaters, uh, heating and cooling systems, uh, especially when we just dealt with one of the hotter summers in Texas. Um, and these are the emergency type repairs and the goal is to have them done in a couple of days um, once you've been qualified. So uh, the major thing here is that the priority repair technicians, those are City of Fort Worth employees, after the client is qualified and goes through the uh, income qualification process, which would just be uh, pr proving a certain amount of income, uh, they would have a technician go out, inspect the house, uh, prioritize whatever uh, the severe issues are in that home, and then up to $5,000, as I said, uh, can be spent on these. So uh, these are emergency repairs, and it's, it's important to differentiate here that they're not cosmetic. There are other programs that uh, once you get, once you call these numbers, there are other programs that are available for that, but priority repair specifically is not that. Priority repair two, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, es importante notar que los de prioridad primero son hasta cinco mil dólares. Uh, tenía un técnico que trabaja para la ciudad que va a ir a, a usted y a su hogar para poder a, arreglar estos arreglos dentro de unos días y serían cosas como las que ya hemos mencionado de calentador de, de agua, fugas de línea, uh, alcantarillado, sistemas de calificación. Y ahora vamos a mover a si prioridad 2. So the priority repair two goes a little bit above that. It does include um, more the other items that we talked about. So water and sewer lines and those kinds of things, but it does go a little bit further above that for roof repairs because uh, roof, roof repairs can cost a little bit more money. Um, and then holistic systems like the entire AC system or uh, even bathroom sub subflooring as a health and safety concern. Um, let's say that your toilet is leaking or your bathroom shower is leaking and it's causing damage to that subfloor. That's a health issue. A safety issue, and that is a that's why we call it the priority repairs because it's about making your home healthy, safe, and sanitary. Los temas de prioridad incluyen cosas como fallas en el sistema eléctrico, reparaciones del techo, sistemas de aire uh, que no son seguras o funcionan, uh, pisos de caídos. Entonces, nuevamente, esos problemas son serios y son reparaciones no cosméticas. Uh, por eso son reparaciones de sistemas mecánicos. So the next, uh, when we move into the, the next thing, the realm of eligibility, uh, we talk about the second handout that you're going to get, which is a breakdown of the different uh, uh, income qualifications. So specific to the priority repair program, we talk about something called area median income, which is the middle point of all of the city of Fort Worth based on the census data that we just talked about. Um, and it's a, it's a shot about 50% or above that mark and 50% or below. 
So when we say 60% AMI, we're saying 60% of the area median income. And so for an idea for a family of four, that's about, uh, based on uh, current census data, is about $48,900 uh, for four people in that house. That's four people, four earners in that home. Uh, that's the aggregate income for that home and four total people. So the income is calculated very uh, uh, simply. It's everybody over the age of 18 in that house that brings in income, but the number of people in your household is uh, the everybody in your house. So anybody, meaning uh, your children, uh, your grandparents, uh, whoever that may be. So the next part is we're going to talk about the eligibility of the program. And this means who is eligible for the program. A base de ingresos sería uh, el promedio de los ingresos del área, que sería aproximadamente el 60% de los ingresos de esa área uh, de cualquier persona que viva en la casa que tenga mayor de 18 años que haga una contribución así el hogar. So, uh... And that is a combination of the next couple of slides, um, but the general thing is, is that an inspection has to be done and the paperwork has to be filed before. Uh, these are federal dollars, so we have to make sure that the funds are going to those with the most need. And so we have to verify that your income is uh, eligible for this program before we can actually do an inspection. So we can't, that's the first step, is to call the number on that sheet, talk with one of our, uh, our um, city, our city employees, and we do, it is available in Spanish. We have people who speak Spanish, so that won't be an issue. And they can help you step by step. They're very nice ladies, very nice gentlemen, uh, and they're here to help you and make sure that your home is healthy, safe, and sanitary. La casa debe estar ocupada por el dueño, lo que significa que si usted es el dueño también vive allí, uh, también debe estar dentro de los límites de la ciudad, debe de completar toda la documentación antes que la casa sea inspectada. Um, Pero el primer paso es hablar al número de teléfono al cual le vamos a dar el folleto y puede hablar con alguien en inglés o en español. Uh, tenemos empleados que hablan ambos idiomas y pueden compartir esta información con usted porque la primera parte es de completar la documentación. And Eric, um, we have a question. I don't know if we're going to answer here on the next slide. But if do you have to be a citizen to qualify for the priority repair program? Uh, can you be a legal permanent resident or undocumented? So la pregunta era si podía ser un ciudadano, tiene que ser ciudadano para calificar para este programa o si puede ser permanente legal o ser indocumentado. You must be a legal resident to receive the, the federal dollars coming from HUD, yes. So tiene que ser un residente legal para poder recibir uh, dinero para este programa. So, uh, the, is that, does that answer the question for now? Yes. Okay. So, next we're going to talk about another program that the city offers called the Home Buyer Assistance Program. And this is a, much like it sounds, it is for first time home buyers and it is to help you get off the ground and get into a home so that you can uh, grad, you know, move from renting and then uh, start a start a home for your family or even just for yourself. Otro programa que ofrece el departamento es para compradores de vivienda por primera vez. El programa de asistencia para compradores uh, proporciona dinero para que una familia que esté rentando o quiera comprar una casa lo pueda hacer por primera vez. So this is a mortgage assistance for the first time home buyers, like I just mentioned, and it provides up to $20,000. This is new uh, as of this year. This is just passed by council that uh, we increased it from 15 to 20,000 and it's for first time home buyers for uh, down payment assistance and up to uh, a certain amount as we'll cover here in a couple of slides uh, for uh, uh, the down payment assistance and the overall mortgage reduction. So el dinero se usa para uh, hipotecas y puede ser hasta 20 mil dólares. Esto es nuevo. Uh, serían para viviendas ubicadas dentro um, de la ciudad. Y la asistencia sería se usaría para la hipoteca, pero también para otros requisitos que vamos a ver en la siguiente. So, as it was just mentioned, this is just a visual so that you can see. Uh, you can use the full $20,000 for mortgage assistance. 
uh, and or you could uh, use up to three thousand dollars of that twenty thousand. Uh, you can do this and or meaning you can do both, but the total cap is twenty thousand dollars. So up to three thousand dollars of that can be used towards closing costs or down payment. So el uso, como mencionamos, podría ser para la hipoteca, uh, puede ser para asistencia. Para eso, o puede usar tres mil dólares para costos de cierre o yo el pago inicial del hogar. So the big question, are you eligible? So the primary, the primary things are, are this. Now there are some special things that come with uh, COVID that come with uh, you know, advancements uh, or changes in the, uh, in the program. There's a lot to cover when it comes to home buyer's assistance. So if you're interested, I highly recommend that you contact the number and get with uh, one, of our, one of our city staff that can help you with that. But uh, you have to have not owned a home in the last three years. You have to live in that home as your primary residence and you have to choose a city approved lender, which that list is provided to you. And they're all great people to work with and they, they're familiar with this program. Uh, so uh, the person applying, uh, you must live in this house as your principal residence for an extended period of time. Now, since we increased the funding total, that, that, that total is 10 years. So what would happen if you sold your home then that amount of money that was uh, given to uh, you for that mortgage assistance or that down payment assistance, whatever it may be, would then be recaptured at the sale of your home and then funneled back into the program to help somebody else do exactly what you did and keep furthering that along for the city of Fort Worth and uh, the residents that are, in, that are in need or trying to get their first home. La persona que solicite esta ayuda no puede haber sido dueño de una vivienda en los últimos tres años Uh, sin embargo, una ama de casa desplazada es elegible, por ejemplo, si está divorciada o enviudada y puede que no haya trabajado durante un tiempo. Uh, debe vivir en la casa como su residencia principal. Eso tiene que ser donde vive a tiempo completo y debe elegir a un prestamista aprobado por la ciudad. Y hay una lista de ellas en nuestro sitio de web. Uh, pero también es importante que pueda llamar uh, para averiguar cuáles son los que uh, los prestamistas que son aprobados por la ciudad. So continuing with the eligibility, uh, you'd have to give a minimum contribution and uh, that contribution is either uh, $1,000, at least $1,000 towards whatever that home purchase is or 2% or whatever is less, which is different than a lot of the things that we've heard. To give you an example, if the home costs $50,000, uh, 2% of that would be $1,000. Conversely, If the home cost $100,000, then 2% of that would be $2,000 and the home buyer would only need to, uh, would only need to uh, use $1,000 of their own dollars uh, to qualify for this program. Uh, additionally, uh, unlike the priority repair program, the income threshold for this program is 80% AMI. So if we look back at that, that attachment, you'll see it. Uh, which uh, equals for about a family of four, as I was explaining before with those with those circumstances, would be about $65,200 for a family of four annually. So, el comprador de la vivienda debe aportar algo de su propio dinero para calificar. Um, serían mil dólares o dos por ciento por el precio de compra, lo que sea menos. Uh, el ejemplo es si el dos por ciento en una casa es de cinco. Cuenta mil serían mil dólares, por lo que las casas más, cala, más caras solo requieren mil dólares. Uh, la base de ingresos para este, este programa sería el 8% del ingreso medio del área, uh, que se, sería para una familia de cuatro, sería alrededor de 65 mil uh, dólares por año y un cambio. Y Eric, we do have another question that came through. Is, um, So anything offered by the department or any of the other programs that you're going to be talking about, um, can you mention if it's only available for legal residents? So the federal, it depends on the funding stream. So the, I, I can say that. So this is a uh, program from the department. Uh, this is a city run program that is funded through the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And since it is a federal program, they do have that requirement. Uh, that we adhere to. So we do have to prove uh, citizenship or uh, for legal residency within the city of Fort Worth uh, for those programs. Now, when we get into the other programs that may change when um, Beatrice starts talking about the community action partners and with the different state funding sources. 
So for these programs specifically, yes, uh, and, and the let's say program that I'm about to talk about as well, you will be uh, required to um, prove that uh, legal residency. <coughs> So, la pregunta era si todos los programas de, que ofrece el departamento tiene solamente son para residentes que sean legales y la, la respuesta es uh, para este programa sí porque los fondos de este programa vienen del gobierno federal así a la ciudad para que ellos uh, lo aloquen a los residentes pero para otros programas que vamos a hablar más adelante puede ser un poquito más diferente para pero para estos a primeros tres programas a respuesta si tienen que ser residentes que son legales. So with the uh, the last point I'll say for the home buyer assistance program before we get into the let's say program is that there's a lot of information and I again I'm just going to plug that one more time that I recommend that if you are interested in this or if you know somebody who is to call the number that is provided on that that uh, resource sheet that is being provided to you. That que vamos a mencionar de este programa es que hay bastante información a uh, que sería hacer todo otro taller para este solo programa, eso es mejor que hable por teléfono para ver si usted califica. So, without further ado, uh, we can go into the let's safe let, let's safe program, excuse me. Uh, so the goal here is safer homes specifically for families with children that are under the age of six and for those that have family or that um, are income qualified and have families with uh, children age six or younger. Uh, but anybody can apply if you have a uh, house that is built prior to 1978. The reason for that is because in 1978 there was a there was a legislation passed that uh, basically barred uh, certain concentrations of lead hazard uh, in paint on the inside of homes because up until that time, lead was used in pretty much everything because it was a great component. It's a strong component and it makes things better. But the problem is, is we didn't understand the hazards. So in 1978, they passed that. And so these programs were developed thereafter. And the city's been conducting this program, uh, specifically the Lead Safe program since 2012. So, el siguiente programa del cual vamos a hablar es el programa de Let Safe, que es un programa que es uh, para mantener los hogares a salvo y seguros contra el plomo y es para ayudar a proteger a los residentes de la exposición del plomo. Y esto es porque la mayoría de las casas que fueron construidas antes de 1978 se encontró a uh, pintura en tuberías de agua uh, eléctrica y más uh, antes se encontraba el plomo mucho en, en estas pinturas y en estas áreas. Antes de conocer los riesgos para la salud, si manipula el plomo durante las reparaciones o remodelaciones, uh, el polvo puede inhalarse y no es seguro para uh, los riesgos de los niños bajo de la edad de 6. So, este programa ha estado en la ciudad desde el 2012 y ayuda a... Uh, contra el plomo y a la seguridad de las casas, especialmente en los niños. So the reason why this program is geared towards uh, families with children is because children are the most at risk for these because of the severe health risks that are associated with those lead paint hazards. Um, uh, we have speech impediments, uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, learning disabilities, uh, speech issues, behavioral problems, a whole slew of things, and the most at risk are those between, uh, between the ages of six months and six years old. Um, and uh, if you've done any construction in your home, if you've ever disturbed some of that lead paint, because when we, when we turn uh, uh, rooms over and we paint them and we uh, update them as we move through the years, we disturb that paint and it creates lead dust. And lead is lead is a heavy component, so it settles on the floor. And we all know children love to put their hands in their mouths. So they crawl around, they do, they, they do a series of different things and they put that in their mouths and it can elevate their blood level to a toxic level and cause a lot of damage to them. Uh, la razón por cual hay un énfasis más grande en los niños es porque ellos están al más riesgo de contratar Um, el plomo en sus cuerpos porque causa, puede causar problemas con el cerebro, puede causar uh, problemas auditivos uh, con el lenguaje, uh, puede causar uh, problemas en su aprendizaje y en su crecimiento. Por eso ponemos un énfasis en ayudar a familias que tengan niños bajo la edad de seis años. So cuando esté remodelando un cuarto, um, es importante saber que los niños uh, pueden estar en el piso y cuando 
ponemos, uh, quitamos una pared, ese polvo se, se queda en el suelo y ellos están caminando, lo pueden tener en sus manos y lo pueden inhalar y se queda en su sistema de los niños. So the big question is, are you eligible? The key here is that year 1978. So if your home was built prior to 1978, then that is the key, that's the key. There are some high risk or what is also referred to as target areas uh, throughout Fort Worth that have high concentrations of these homes that were built in that time. Uh, after that time, as I mentioned before, uh, lead paint in that in that uh, in that level was out, was barred from being used. It was that it was pulled off the shelves and it was it pretty much stopped being used. Now it can still be a hazard in certain places, so um, we will still do risk assessments on uh, different things like that. Um, but the primary uh, qualifying factors are going to be built before 1978, uh, children present, and uh, uh, having. Um, your income qualified, which, as we just mentioned, uh, it is 80% AMI, and we can just look back at that that handout once again to see if uh, uh, we qualify for those things prior. But if you do have children present, oh, and also uh, if you don't have children, that's not that's not a uh, that doesn't mean you can't uh, qualify for the program because the city's goal is to remove these hazards for all homes uh, eventually, as far as we as far as we can take it each year. Um, and especially if you're pregnant, because if you're pregnant, you're expecting you're going to have a toddler in the next six months that's running around, maybe crawling around, running away from mommy, running away from daddy. So we want to protect those people as much as we can. Para ser elegible para este programa, la propiedad debe ser sido construida antes de 1978 y esa es la clave. El programa se ofrece en toda la ciudad, pero la mayoría de las casas antiguas o más viejas están en los códigos postales que puede ver y están en alto riesgo. No quiere decir que otras áreas de la ciudad no estén en riesgo, pero este es donde están la mayoría de las casas que son viejas uh, y que pueden contener plomo o uh, pintura a base de plomo. Uh, también mencionó que las mujeres embarazadas también están a riesgo porque están a riesgo de tener bebés que pueden empezar a caminar o están reservándose en el piso, so queremos asegurarnos que ellos también estén incluidos. Esto no quiere decir que solamente incluimos a, a hogares o casas que solamente tengan niños, pero son la prioridad, pero también vayan a otras casas que estén al riesgo, porque la meta sería que todas las casas que son a base de plomo um, no estarían en riesgo. So there's only uh, two other major points that I wanted to cover before I pass it off to Beatrice so that she can talk about the uh, community action uh, partners uh, programs, and it's just some distinctions. So the priority repair program did require that uh, you had to be the owner of that home. The lead program deviates from that in that it can be renter or owner. But if you are a renter in that pro in that home and you qualify, uh, it is a 1978 home and the other things that we talked about. Uh, you just need to have permission from that landlord in the form of a letter, or we can we can discuss and work with you on uh, how to acquire those things. Uh, and then uh, the other thing was. Uh, what does it mean when when you read or you hear us say that uh, a child spends a quote unquote significant amount of time? Again, these are federal funds, and they have very very uh, you know hard lines in the sand on what we must do and how we must qualify for uh, these programs. And so HUD HUD defines this as at least three hours a day, two days a week for a total of sixty or more hours a year. So uh, that means two days a week you have to have that child, which is six or under. Uh, be a, be uh, present at that house, and then think about your grandparents. Think about um, dropping your child off. Uh, uh, your child goes to grandma's house, or um, goes to uh, the aunt's house, or the the uncle's house on their way home from work. Uh, I'm sorry, on the way home from school, waiting for mom or dad to get off work and come pick them up. So, if the child is in that house for that amount of time, then we can qualify that as uh, uh, more specific. And so that's a higher priority. And again, you can get more information by calling, but that would be a higher priority and you would you'd be jumped a little further ahead of the line to get those services done. But this is a high priority thing and we take this very seriously and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I look forward to hearing from anybody that has a call. Uh, una parte importante de este programa es que la elegibilidad que es diferente del programa de, de prioridad y reparaciones, es que no tiene que ser el dueño de su hogar para poder calificar para el, pro, el programa. Puede ser un inquilino. Eso quiere decir que trabajaremos con el dueño para poder hacer los ajustes porque es usted el que está viviendo en el hogar. So, 
Uh, para este programa no se necesitaría necesariamente ser un residente legal, pero el dueño sí necesita, neces, necesitaría ser el dueño legal de esa propiedad. Uh, pero trabajarían con ellos para hacer, asesorar eso. Uh, cuando decimos que cuánto tiempo tiene que pasar un niño para poder calificar en este programa, un niño menor de seis años debe vivir o pasar tiempo en el hogar. ¿Cuánto tiempo? Al menos tres horas al día, dos veces por semana, por un total de menos de 60 horas al año. Entonces, eso quiere decir que un abuelo que cuida a un niño pequeño después de la escuela o durante los fines de semana podría calificar para este programa y trabajaríamos con el dueño del hogar para que califiquen para este programa. Thanks again. Go ahead. Hello, Ruth. Is it my turn now? Yes, Beatrice. Okay. Hi. Good evening, guys. Um, this is Beatrice Guerrero I'm with the Community Action Partners, and um, wanted to welcome everyone. I'm going to start with the goal is financial independence. We manage uh, manages federal, state, and local grants, funds, and services, and we serve all of Tarrant County. So, la segunda parte de esta presentación va a ser sobre el programa de Community Action Programs, o CAP para corto. Y la meta de este programa es independencia financiera. Ellos manejan subvenciones, fondos, servicios federales, estatales, y sirven a todo el condado de Tarrant, no solamente a esos que viven en la ciudad de Fort Worth. Okay, our goal is financial independence, and our program sites are at eight different uh, Fort Worth community centers. Eligibility varies, but generally low income. Hay ocho ofi um, oficinas de CAP y están en los centros comunitarios que están a nuestro alrededor. Uh, la elegibilidad varía, pero generalmente son de ingresos bajos. Okay. We do help with utility bills, uh, utility bill payments for up to 12 months, and help with the disconnection or high bills during weather crisis. Uh, estos programas ayudan con facturas de servicios públicos. Eso incluye la electricidad, gas, um, y a veces facturas de agua. Si hay fondos disponibles, ayudan hasta por 12 meses. Otros brindan asi asistencia por única vez uh, por una desconexión o una factura alta durante una crisis climática. And with the help of the utility bills, we also do uh, heating and AC system repairs, portable units, and if not repairable, we will replace them. Otro programa um, también ayuda con las reparaciones de calificación, aire acondicionado para grupos uh, prioritarios como ancianos o por personas discapacitadas. Um, y otros también ayudan uh, con crisis climáticas como durante una ola de calor, como estamos experimentando ahora. Okay, the help with the utility bills. Um, Weatherization services to improve energy efficiency in the home. And we do like caulking, weather stripping, window repair, etc. And we also have classes to help lower your energy costs. Um, CAP también ayuda a reducir las facturas de servicios públicos. Uh, por ejemplo, la climatizando su hogar. Eso incluye uh, calificar uh, burletes o hacer otras reparaciones que mantienen el aire caliente afuera y el, en el verano y el aire frío en el invierno. Um, okay. uh, we also help with the job tuition assistance for short term certifications and training, auto repair, commercial drivers, computer system, medical, etc. Asistencia de matrícula para certificación de corto tiempo, uso también ayudamos con trabajos. Um, eso sería como reparaciones de auto, de conducir, comercial, de computadora o médicas. Y estas licencias uh, le pueden ayudar a que le paguen más en su trabajo o si está buscando uh, avanzar su carrera. And also the help with the job, we also fund for books, uniform supplies related to training, career, career counseling, interview skills and budgeting, etc. 
So, el programa de CAP también puede pagar con libros, uniformes y otros suministros del entrenamiento. Y también ofrecen talleres y asesoramiento profesional individual que le ayudarán a mejorar sus habilidades <coughs> para las entrevistas y escribir un currículo o más. Another program that we have is Help for Veterans, Veterans, Their Surviving Spouses and Families, and also One-Time Rental Mortgage and Utility Payments to Veterans. Los próximos programas uh, de CAP les son para veteranos, así como los cónyuges o sobrevivientes y las familias de los veteranos. Ofrece pagos únicos de uh, alquiler por una vez, a servicios públicos a los veteranos para evitar la falta de vivienda. And also, continuing on the veterans, we also um, do ramps, grab bars, doors, handrails, etc. Also, heating, air conditioning, water, sewer lines, flooring, and roofs. Uh, para continuar, la, los programas de veteranos también ayudan con la accesibilidad si necesitan rampas, barras de apoyo, puertas, pasamanos, Um, calificación, aire acondicionado, agua, alcantarillado, pisos o techos. Okay, we also do help with taxes, volunteer income tax assistance program that is short for VITA, free income tax preparation and e-filing. El programa de asistencia por voluntarios de declaración de impuestos es otro programa que ayuda a Uh, el programa CAP y son preparaciones gratis de declaración de impuestos y hacen e-filing. Um. Okay. Uh, the help with taxes, staff and volunteers are IRS certified. Earned income tax credit and child tax credit as well. So, el personal y los voluntarios de VIRA son entrenados por el servicio de impuestos internos o el IRS y verifican si usted califica para un crédito de impuestos de niños o crédito ganado por ingresos de sus impuestos. Well, are you eligible? Find details online, fortworthtexas.gov slash cap. Questions? You can call the question line at 817-392-5720 or make appointments at 817-392-5790. But I'm sorry, at this time, we are just doing mail-in or online because of our crisis at this time. Sorry. Uh, todos los programas de CAP tienen requisitos de legibilidad ligeramente diferentes. So, es mejor que uh, visite en línea a ver si califica para los programas porque son diferentes. Cada uno de, de cuál habló son diferentes programas y puede hablar por teléfono o puede visitar el sitio de web para hacer una cita. Ahorita nos están... Uh, haciendo citas en personas, pero pueden ayudar a completar la solicitud que necesita por teléfono. Are you eligible? Proof of identity and residence. Proof of income for all household members 18 and over. Some programs proof of, proof of legal residence or citizenship. So, para este programa necesita prueba de identificación. Um, eso quiere decir que necesitaría uh, una con foto para que usted pueda probar en dónde vive. Uh, también necesitará prueba de ingresos y algunos programas necesitan pruebas de residencia legal o ciudadanía. Ok, Ms. Ruth, that's it, unless there's any questions. Uh, There's no questions that I can see, uh, but for some of the CAP programs, you know, it's important to note that for the proof of income, it'll be 30 days of income. So if you're paid weekly, uh, that would be four to five subs. And some programs, uh, like I said, require proof of legal residency or citizenship. So para uno de los programas, es importante que notar que la prueba de ingreso sería enseñar hasta 30 días de sus ingresos y si se Paga por semana, eso serían cuatro uh, cheques o pay stubs, o cinco o más, o más dependiendo de qué frecuente le paguen. Correct, and then if uh, they're on Social Security or SSI, it's just the award letter for the year 2020. Y si está recibiendo uh, ingresos de seguro social, sería a uh, prueba de, o la, le la letra de verificación que le mandan uh, para el año de del 2020. 
And one other thing, Ruth, is to make sure it's for all households, just like our other programs, all household members 18 and over, we get a lot of calls asking about that and it's everyone in the household of that is 18 and over, we need their income. So, también es importante notar que los ingresos no solo son para uh, una persona, sino serían para todos los miembros que viven en el hogar que serían ma a mayores de 18 años. Thank you. Uh, moving along, I wanted to kind of do a recap of everything that we've kind of talked about throughout our workshops in the last couple of days. Um, and the city also has programs to keep your home safe. So we, you met your MPO, his name is Omar Bustos, and police officers are assigned to a geographic area. Um, in addition to patrolling, they identify crime trends and communicate with residents and business owners. Uh, attend community meetings, such as your neighborhood association meeting events and recruit volunteers for citizens on patrol or crime watch groups. So, quería hacer un repaso de todos los programas de cuales hemos hablado en los talleres. Um, algunos de estos programas ayudan a mantener su hogar seguro, igual como al uh, oficial de patrulla de vecindario. Um, son oficiales asignados a áreas geográficas específicas. Usted tiene uno en su área y oyó de él. Su nombre es Omar Bustos. Um, además de patrullar, identificar tendencias o delictivas, se comunican con los residentes y dueños y negocios y asisten a reuniones de vecindarios igual como la de ustedes. Y también reclutan voluntarios para ciudadanos en patrulla y aquellos que están vigilando contra el crimen. Uh, al lado de tener a uh, un oficial de patrulla, también tiene a uh, un especialista de prevención de crimen. Ellos están asignados a cada una de las seis divisiones de patrulla y ofrecen información sobre vigilancia del crimen en el vecindario, encuestas e inspecciones, seguridad, um, ferias de seguridad, operación de niños, uh, y también hacen el National Night Out y, otros, y otras cosas. So aside from having a assigned uh, MPO, or Neighborhood Patrol Officer, you also have a Crime Prevention Specialist, and they are assigned to each of the six patrol divisions that we have in the city. They offer information of, on Neighborhood Crime Watch, security surveys, and inspections. Um, they also provide safety fairs and operations for safe uh, child. So they'll provide uh, kid IDs whenever they do these um, Crime Watch fairs as well. Otro programa de cual hemos hablado es de código de cumplimiento. So one of the other programs that we talked about was regarding uh, code compliance and their safe initiative program. Um, it's concentrated effort to improve neighborhoods. So code officers go door to door educating residents about code violations and residents are given an opportunity to fix any problems before getting a notice or ticket. Este departamento uh, de código de cumplimiento es un esfuerzo concentrado para mejorar el vecindario. Los oficiales de código van en puerta en puerta para educar a los residentes sobre las violaciones de código. Los residentes tienen la oportunidad de solucionar cualquier problema antes de recibir un aviso o una multa. And then we also have the Code Rangers Program. Um, the Code Ranger Program trains residents to volunteer to provide reports and suspect code violations. And the city sends courtesy letters to property owners. Uh, the program allows code officers to devote more time on chronic or dangerous, um, complicated issues. Um, but one of my favorite things about the uh, Code Rangers program is that you get to learn everything you ever wanted to know about um, the city's code. And it's really amazing the things that you'll find out that are legal or are not um, legal within the code of the city um, as you start driving around. So. If you're interested in that program, um, I'd be happy to get you in touch with the Code Rangers. El programa de Code Rangers entrena a voluntarios residentes para que proporcionen informes sobre presuntas violaciones del código. Uh, luego la ciudad envía cartas de cortesía a los propietarios. El programa permite a los oficiales de código dedicar más tiempo en problemas que son crónicos, peligrosos o más complicados. Mi parte favorita, uh, 
del de programa de Code Rangers es que averiguas todo lo que tienes que saber sobre el código de la ciudad y así vas a diferentes partes, partes del, de la ciudad, estás viendo diferentes violaciones que no sabías que podían existir o te dabas cuenta de ellas. Both programs encourage residents and uh, property owners to maintain their homes and yards um, to preserve property value and discourage crime, which I think it's one of the most important parts. So, ambos programas uh, alientan a los residentes y a los propietarios de hogares a mantener sus yardas y sus hogares seguros, pero también um, a que no pase el crimen en su vecindario. Uh, this one is one of my favorite topics to talk about, which is our office, um, the Community Engagement Office. Uh, we work with neighborhood associations, much like yours, um, to form an association. We give presentations and trainings on a variety of city topics. If you would want a presentation for um, your school or your civic group or any other type of group, we'd be happy to come out and speak to you everything that has to do with the city. If we don't know that topic right off the hand of uh, the top of our heads, we'll get the right um, city staff to and help you coordinate with them so that you can set up those workshops um, for us to be able to come out and educate on city resources. Y finalmente, la Oficina de Integración Comunitaria, que es mi parte favorita porque yo trabajo para este programa, es que trabajamos con asociaciones de vecinos y grupos que quieren formar una asociación y ofrecemos presentaciones y entrenamiento sobre una variedad de temas de la ciudad. Si usted uh, pertenece a un grupo de la escuela, a un grupo cívico, a un grupo de vecinos, nosotros vamos a su área, hacemos una presentación sobre cualquier tema de la ciudad. Si nosotros no sabemos quién es la persona, no sabemos de ese tema, sabemos la persona indicada en la ciudad que puede hacer esa presentación. Y nosotros coordinamos con ellos para que ellos puedan ir a sus juntas y hacer ese tipo de presentaciones. We also help coordinate volunteer efforts to keep the city clean and safe um, and a great place to live. And we help connect you with other city services and resources. Um, if there ever is a problem or concern, our office is there to help you coordinate uh, with the right city staff. I know sometimes it can be a hassle to uh, figure out or follow up on a concern that you called the call center for. So that's what we're there for to help you connect um, those thoughts or follow up for you as well. También coordinamos esfuerzos de voluntarios que mantienen la ciudad limpia y segura y excelente um, para que sea un lugar seguro para vivir, pero también lo conectamos con servicios de la ciudad y recursos. Uh, nosotros estamos allí para conectarlos. Si usted ha llamado al centro de llamadas y ha hecho una queja, pero no sabe qué pasó, nosotros podemos conectarle con el departamento adecuado para que pueda hacer esa conexión uh, con ellos o con este departamento uh, en nuestra oficina. Tenemos dos enlaces que hablan español y podemos ser ese punto de contacto para usted. So in our office, we do have two community engagement liaisons that speak Spanish, myself included. So please use us as a resource. We like to be there for neighbors to help connect you to different city services. So that's the end of our workshop. Um, right there, you see our office's phone number. Um, and like I said, we're here to answer questions and concerns that you may have. Um, ahí ve que ese es el número de nuestra oficina. Estamos aquí para hacer, uh, responder a sus preguntas o sus quejas que, que tenga y conectarlos con el departamento adecuado. And I don't know that we have um, any other questions, but I can do a double check. Don't see any more. So I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us. This is our fourth workshop that we've done um, in the series of four weeks. And I just want to thank every department that has joined us and has been able to give information. You'll be able to find the recordings of every workshop on the city's website. So that's going to be Fort Worth, Texas slash Rosemont area. And they should be on the website next week so that you can share with your neighbors if they missed out an opportunity to view this workshop. So, nada más le quiero dar las gracias a todos ustedes por reunirse nosotros las últimas cuatro semanas y aprender más sobre los recursos de la ciudad. Estos talleres van a estar um, grabados y van a estar en nuestro sitio de web, que es rosemont.gov.ar. Uh, 
y va a poder encontrar las grabaciones de estos talleres y también va a poder encontrar las presentaciones. So we look forward and I look forward to working with your neighborhood um, and being a part of this neighborhood improvement program as more updates come about. We'll make sure to get with your neighborhood association, but also you may also reach out to me at any point if you have any questions or concerns about any of um, the neighborhood improvement program. So, nada más quería darles las gracias una vez más. Vamos a tener um, más actualizaciones así avanza el año uh, sobre el programa, pero si usted tiene preguntas o quiere conectarse con otro departamento, um, lo podemos poner en, en contacto con ellos y lo compartiremos con la asociación de vecinos para que ellos también lo puedan uh, compartir. Just want to remind you one last time to uh, make sure that you do the survey that in the comment section. So, nada, una vez más, nada más le quería uh, recordar que completan la encuesta que está en la área de comentarios o en el chat. Y espero que tengan buenas noches. So, thank you and good night, everybody. Council members, do you have anything to add? No, thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was great to see you all this evening. And I appreciate everybody tuning in. I've added some links in the chat on Facebook that correspond to some of the items that were presented tonight. So I hope that is helpful. Have a good night. Thank you.